3D printers the size of a small house, a car being put on a diet, ultra fast, high temp, polymer extrusion, and 3D printed parts going to the literal moon. There you are, welcome back. This is episode one of three from our visit to Rapid TCT in Chicago, Illinois, thanks to SME. It was a lot of fun. And it's great to see all of these professional and industrial companies out and about trying to get the word out. We got to visit so many booths and talk to an incredible number of people. You get to see four awesome visits this time. We've got Thermwood, Nexa 3D, we've got Essentium, and finally Aeon 3D. First up, Thermwood. Big machines are at Rapid TCT 2021. This is no exception. And my buddy Mark's gonna tell me all about it. Hey Mark! How's it going? Going great. Hello everyone. Going great. This is insane. It is, it's quite striking on the skyline here at Rapid TCT to be able to see this, right? This is insane. And so I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about it. Sure. Um, this is a five foot by 10 foot model, which has a 48 inch Z. Five foot. Five foot by 10 foot feet. And four 40, feet tall. Four feet tall. And it's actually one of the smaller machines that we built. <laughs> we build up to 40 feet by 10 feet wide. Oh man, so, so you can build me a house, right? We can build a house. I appreciate that. So with this small one though, right here, it looks like, just, just from looking at it, it's a pellet system with a big nozzle and the nozzle's doing some gymnastics. So maybe we start at the top. Sure. With every machine, we provide a dryer. Uh, oh. And the dryer actually takes care of, we have a 600 pound hopper that holds the material. Um, it gets dried, it has to be dried depending on material, but usually everything gets dried. Uh, and it is pellet. Uh, they're, we're non-proprietary on the pellet, so you can use well, uh, whatever material you want. I, I think open filament, but you're open pellet. Open pellet. Open there pellet, I love open it. Pellet. And uh, I mean, we, we use a thousand pound Gaylord. You know, you put the, uh, because the, the nozzle, or the extruding system can extrude up to 200 pounds an hour of material. Jeez, okay, so it's moving that material. It's moving that material. So then the, the pellets at the top come in to the system and go to the extruder. That's correct. And then at the bottom, I'm looking at the nozzle and it looks like it's doing some gymnastics of some sort. Yes, it is. We actually have a uh, roller wheel that follows the bead, or the, actually the, the extruded bead. So what we do there is for maximum adhesion uh, between layers, we extrude the bead through a half inch nozzle and the roller wheel basically rolls over the top of that. And the roller wheel follows oh. the nozzle, follows the, the design. Oh, okay. So I was thinking, you know, when you see like a concrete printer, it has almost like a, a square or a rectangle nozzle. Right. And so for directionality, right? right. But that, you still have a, a circular orifice, circular orifice, but that roller wheel is gonna follow the path of the extrusion to kind of just squish it down a little bit. That's correct. So you get great Z adhesion. Great Z adhesion. That's what we want. You know, industries that we sell into, they're looking, especially in the aerospace, we're designing a tool, building a tool. Uh, they don't want voids because they have to get this. <laughs> these tools go into an autoclave, which is up to 350 degrees. Oh, and a void would be bad in It'd an autoclave. It'd be bad. Pressure and heat. And oh my gosh. Out. So, this is what they like about it. We don't. When we create a tool, uh, this is near net shape printing. So we create the tool, then we machine it. And then this is what they lay up their tools, their, their parts from. That's amazing. Wow. Okay, so that that roller wheel is going to ensure the, the there's no voids. That's correct. In Z. That's right. And then you're printing it looks like on plywood. Yeah, it's uh, with sandpaper maybe. No, it's 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 something we had to develop when we started into this business. It's what oh. we call a bead board. A bead board. A bead board. A and bead board. And we we tried a number of different platforms to to print on and this seemed to work the best. It's basically just ABS pellets and we use this proprietary glue. Uh, it's basically wood glue. Oh. Uh, <laughs> just, I love it. It's proprietary but you just told me what it is. It's basically. That's all right. That's uh, all right. We spread that on and put the ABS pellets on, let it dry of course. What helps us there is that as you're laying down the, the raft layers of beads, you're, you're actually melting the ABS pellets a little bit. Right. Okay. So, and you're also liquefying the glue. So as it cools, it has a tendency just to cool and move with the part and not 
pull up off of the. Oh, that's kind of a neat way to do it. it. It's worked well. I mean, in the years we started doing this, uh, our customers use that method. Plus, I mean, if I'm just thinking, ABS of wood glue and some plywood. I mean, you can make a build plate of any size. Any size. And on that big machine, I mean, you you're rocking. I would imagine multiple four by eight sheets of plywood. Absolutely. Yeah, they're they're going all the way down the machine. At that point. So I have to ask, something like this. What price range does this exist in? The machine you're looking at here, which is additive only, and we build additive and subtractive. Oh, you can put a CNC head on this. We put a CNC head on, not on this particular machine, but other models. I see. Okay. This is an additive only. Uh, you're looking at machines in the six hundred thousand oh, dollar neighborhood. Okay. Uh, when you start getting into larger formats, they get up into the yeah. two to three million dollar range. I know that's. I mean, it, in the within the industry, that is a, a decent price. Um, but for, for people that aren't familiar with that, it's it's one of those things where you have machines that can do jobs where none of them, no other machine can do. And a lot of times, uh, the people that buy these sort of machines are going to make their money back in a short amount of time with That's the jobs that they perform. If they want to find out more information about this and those machines that you talked about, do you have a website that they can go to? Absolutely, yeah. Thermwood is the manufacturer of the LSAM machine. Okay. Uh, you can go to thermwood.com and there will be a link on that side to the LSAM site. Oh, perfect. More information. We'll put a link down in the description as well. We are at the Nexa 3D booth. Are you getting a call? Yes, sorry. <laughs> We're at the Nexa 3D booth and I've got Avi here to talk about this car right here, right? About the fun utility vehicle. The fun utility vehicle. The FUV. The FUV. The FUV. FUV. The FUV. The fun utility vehicle. So why is the FUV at a 3D printing show? Because this company out of Eugene, Oregon, Arkimoto, asked us to put the FUV on a diet. <laughs> They wanted to lose weight, okay. and they wanted to lose weight because they can get longer range per charge. It's good for the oh. environment, it's good for the pocketbook, and the FUV just have fun a little longer. The FUV is funner for longer. Yes. So to reduce weight, we're talking about either less heavy parts, or, well, less heavy parts, and yep. whether that is optimized metal or 3D printed parts, right? All of the above. Yes. So what we did at Nexa 3D is we created like a whole ecosystem of a little bit of generative design to combine some of the parts and lightweight them. Oh, then, combi combine, 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 meaning combine. Less, less parts but Le doing the same function. Less parts because we started by replacing weldments, you know, as, as part of like uh, the, the rear steering carriage. Okay. And to do those today, you'd have to cut metal fixture it, weld it, machine it. So you have a, quite a complex supply chain. We wanted to make it a little more resilient. Then we wanted to remove material. We actually reduced the weight by 50%. 50%. 50%. <laughs> that, that means it could go for a lot longer. And, uh, much, much longer. Wow, okay. And the secret behind it was first the uh, generative design to combine the parts and do the light weighting. And then our new casting materials that print super fast. You know, we have our ultra fast machine that we talked about. We have seen that before at CES. At CES that's right. right. Yeah, that was a long time ago, right? <laughs> that was a CES. long time ago. <laughs> and now we can print these amazing patterns that we send directly to an investment casting foundry. So we're like digitizing metal casting using traditional metal foundries, and then it goes on the car. Oh, I see. So you can do topology optimizations for metal parts. You print the castings on your ultra-fast machine, and then you sacrifice the part for investment casting. That's right. And you're left with a lightweight metal part that performs as good, if not better, if than not the original. Better, if not better. OK, yeah. so Avi, obviously we've got the car here. Can you give me a tour of all the parts? Yes. So let's start with the uh, heaviest part, oh. right? So I want you to lift this one, Joe. Oh, geez, that's heavy. That's heavy, and look how many <laughs> parts it took to assemble it, and how many weldments, and the whole machining. And now check this out. This is exactly 50% lighter, and it's a single part. That's a single that's part, a and it replaces single part this. And it replaces all the manual labor, all the jigging and fish fixturing and welding and everything else that you had to do. Performs better. Takes corners better. And, oh, that's fantastic, and Avi. And it looks cool. It, and it looks really cool. And it's purple. 
And it's purple. And it's purple. Okay, so that's awesome. That's Obviously, awesome. we can understand that. Yeah. Um, and that's really a great use case for investment ca loss investment casting of parts. Yes, and I mean, it does a few things. It gets you to metal 3D printing faster and cheaper, but it also kind of braves, you know, new life into traditional foundries because right. you can digitize them now. Oh, that's so no, cool. I mean, this is you can only do this by combining additive right. and investment casting. So now this is investment casting, digitizing yes. foundries. What about pure... And, and you can kind of see the workflow oh, yeah. right there, right? I can I mean, see that. Kind of, yeah. Okay, so that's cool, obviously, but I mean, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity here to do just purely 3D printed parts, and right? And we did. Okay. And we did. So if you uh, look at the grapes here, this is our new, uh, we call this elastoplastics, right? Elastoplastics. So this is an elastomer, you can feel it. It feels just like rubber. Oh, right? oh wow. And this is 3D printed also on the NXC 400, super fast. These mirrors we printed on our new QLS system, which is a powder-based uh, and machine, you can touch one right there. You can, Look you at can that. see that this is like the real deal. Oh my gosh, it weighs and nothing. It weighs nothing, and but it's, it's still uh, rigid and, and, it's and rigid strong. And it's rigid and it's strong. This is uh, basically uh, a polyamid uh, plastics, thermoplastics, so uh, ready to go. Wow. And hey, wait, that looks that looks 3D printed there. This is also 3D printers. So the the little uh, windshield wiper container and this uh, brake container. I mean, these are all 3D printed. So I like what you're doing, uh, where you're digitizing the foundries. I love that we're using uh, a process that's been honed for decades, but in a digital fashion, making lighter, stronger parts, just thanks to optimized design. It's also about putting some solid, circular economy design principles into it, right? Because you take material out, you use less energy to make it in the first yeah. place. You take material out, you have less waste to begin with. You use 3D printing, you have less input energy into it. And the ability to measure and demonstrate that and to show that we can take energy and material and weight out of the full cycle is how we think the 3D printing industry can contribute to all of this, right? This is very, yeah. this is what's going to power the future. Yeah. So I, I do have one more question for you. Um, it's, it's not drivable in this state, but you're down in Ventura, right? If, if we find our way down there, can I take this for a spin? A hundred percent. And you can do your own segment <laughs> and drive it as long as you can. Rapid TCT 2021 wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Ascension booth. And I'm here with Eric. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you. We're at a table and there's a lot of really cool parts. And this one that I'm actually leaning on, I, I want to know more about it because I heard that you could print this really fast. Yes, um, on a competing machine that prints in a little over 20 hours. We print that in about seven and a half hours. And this is an Altum 985 part. This is Altum, this is PEI. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez. Yeah. We print it directly in a bed, which no one else does. So parts like this and the impeller we have. Um, oh, so it's nice and smooth on the bottom. Nice and smooth on the bottom. We don't use a huge amount of rafting. And this is <laughs> probably the largest peak part you're going to see in additive. Um, that's also printed on the bed. So the darkness on the bottom, that's right from the bed. The and bed sacrifices a little bit of itself. Yeah, just yeah <laughs> it does. Peak is uh, an aggressive material. But uh, we print this at very, very high speeds. And um, we also print print uh, PEC parts as well, so we have both options. So we've got PEAK, and we've pec. got PEC, and we've got Ultim. So yes. I, I know that these materials aren't the easiest to print because the temperatures required are somewhat astronomical compared to consumer-based machines. Yes. So this is, I mean, we're talking almost 400 degrees on the hot end, right? Yes, and our hot end goes up to 550C. So um, <laughs> we've actually shot aluminum out of our hot end. On purpose? Yeah, yeah. You can actually you can actually heat it and, and drive it through. You just can't get it to print because aluminum is weird stuff. It won't even stick to itself at temperature. Sure. Yeah, I, you know, I understand that. But then for so for huge peak, amount of temperature, for peak control. and pack um, and Ultim, obviously. Then we're talking about a heated chamber as well. Yes, it's an infrared heated chamber, so we don't use convection. And so the infrared, it's it's like the same infrared lamps you would get at a sauna. You're made out of carbon. So oh, this, you too. And so this, yeah, everybody is, sorry. I mean, it's not, not special between us two. But uh, the reality is this is also carbon, so the infrared 
um, heats in depth on polymers, so we don't really heat the chamber as much as we heat the parts. I see. Well, that it that's gives us really a huge advantage. It gives you a huge advantage, and I would imagine it makes for more consistency in the parts, right? More consistency, and you can do stuff like print this on the bed because you don't have to worry about the distortion part. One of the reasons that people print on rafts of a support material is so they can flex around and we can keep the part very stable, oh, print directly yeah. in bed and save time and money. Well, I'm, I'm looking at this and just, it's perfectly flat. Like, yes. I don't see any lift, I don't see any, it's that's perfect. What we're bringing. That, that's the kind of technology we're bringing. So then, obviously, this is your machine. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yes, um, so it's an HSC machine. It's high-speed extrusion, it's not FDM process. So what we do, it's an no. extrusion process. Okay but we push so hard on the filament, we actually do shear thinning, okay? So shear thinning is how they feel molds in um, you know, like half the time it normally take because these polymers are not, are not water. So they have all these tangled, it's like spaghetti all tangled up. That makes push sense. push hard enough and shear them, they straighten out and they drop viscosity. So that's oh. what we're doing. That's why the machine has you know, 20, 30 channels of data that's monitoring at all times. So we can keep it in that high speed shearing uh, regime, and that's where our patents are. So the, the ability to be able to throw a polymer really fast through your system lines up the chains and allows it yes. to, to go fast consistently. Yes. Yeah. And you got patents on that. Oh yeah. Oh, that's really cool. And so the, the nice thing about there's two, two advantages. One, speed. So this part here, this is, a, this is a PEC part. What's interesting about this is we print a bed of these, and it was printed on um, another machine, and I won't name it, but... Um, <laughs> It took 22 days to print these, and we, we were able 22 to 22 days. We printed the full set in 18 hours. So the, sometimes <laughs> the speed's very, very dramatic. It depends on the structure of the part. Um, but the other advantage of printing that fast is you get higher strength. So when we print the polymer, because we're printing so fast, we come back to the layer and it's still hot. So right. When when we give specs on our materials and we we make you know, all of our own materials, but we're an open material platform. You can use anybody's materials. Oh, anybody. Okay, so you're, it, I don't have to use Essentia materials no. in an Essentia machine. No, but there's good reason, because we think they're good and they're market price. We're not charging three times market. Okay, well that okay. makes sense. Yeah, so, but if you print that fast, the parts are generally stronger in Z. That makes Be sense. Well, okay, so I come from the consumer world. Okay. And a lot of times we talk about a minimum layer time because the mat consumer yeah. materials have to sort of they cool to, a bit first before yes. you put the next one on top of it for structural integrity. Mm -hmm. So when we're dealing with Peck, Peak, uh, Ultim, we don't need that, right? No, and like, you know, when you print nylon, you usually turn off the fan, right? Absolutely. Okay, so we have one of the most powerful part blowers in the world. I could turn on here and part your hair from here. I mean, three feet away. One but, day we'll try that. Yeah, one day <laughs> we'll try. So the difference is you have to control the heat, right? Okay. So I come around so fast, the part doesn't have a chance to say as well. Oh. So it takes time. It takes time to deform. <laughs> so it takes time for heat transfer. So there's a lot of things we can do at that speed and have That's control. That's amazing. Yeah. Because so the, the speed itself is allowing you for faster extrusion, but also and higher quality prints. You're not allowing the part time to deform so, as yeah. you build it. And if we do, we have the highest performance blower. I mean, this thing is strong, high static pressure and high flow. We can cool apart extremely fast. So we, we can balance both sides very clearly. So you got a leaf blower on the machine? Pretty much, yeah. We just don't have a pull starter on it. Uh, so you did tell me before when we were chatting yeah. that you were the inventor of the machine, is that correct? Yeah, it started as a need. I worked for a very large fruit company and there was a need for um, an additive to do fixtures. And I was uh, led a manufacturing engineering group and um, I didn't see anything in the industry, so this is the result. This is what I want to have to solve supply chain issues at large manufacturers. So this is wow. meant for a manufacturing environment. It's a good prototyping machine, but it's really meant for manufacturing. And so everything we've done here is make it easy for manufacturers to use it. So one, you don't go to Fanuc or Haas to buy material. You don't, you don't yeah, go to Haas sure. to say, I need some more aluminum, right? That makes sense. That's ridiculous. It's also a single, single source supply chain. Okay. Okay. So you can use anybody's materials, but we think we can earn your business by having ESD materials that are available in red and don't slough off. So this is a ESD material that's used right now in aerospace, but it's a soft ESD material in red. And if you take this and rub it against paper, none of this material will come off. If you do oh, it, all of, our, all of our competitors, you can make a pencil with some of our competitors' ESD material, 
and that ESD being electrostatic discharge, right? Electrostatic discharge. So all the electronics is going to be like these plates, like this. This is a nice cheap material, PCTG. It's related to PET, mm -hmm. but it's um, ESD safe. You can machine it; it's still ESD safe, and it will not rub off on surfaces. So you can use it in a clean room. That's so cool. Yeah. This is amazing because your previous job, you found a need and you yep. wanted to solve it, and now you, the, the solution that you've come up with is also a solution available for all sorts of other industries. Well, yeah, and, and I think that's that's the beauty of additive because it's disruptive, but it's also widely based. Mm -hmm. You know, like high-speed printing for you know magazines and stuff. It was disruptive, but it's disruptive printing for magazines. This disrupts everything. Where you build things, how much it costs to build, um, when you can go to um, medium volume manufacturing, like 30, 50,000 parts a year, we are able to touch those jobs. That's this so machine. cool. And the That's... machine is not expensive. You know, it's not oh. a million dollar machine. Okay, so, so what is the price on the machine? Uh, on the dual head machine, it's 179,000. Oh, On a single okay. head machine, it's 150. Um, but if you run the numbers, you'd always buy this machine. Because with the dual <laughs> heads, you can run, it's two independent heads as well, not on the same. So oh, okay. So wholly independent, so you can run, right now you can run copy parts, you can run support material, you can run, you know, Ultima on one side, Peak on the other if you really get crazy. You know, it, it, that would take a little bit of work, but it gives you some more options. And because of that, you've doubled the throughput. So like the stuff that we did in six hours, I can do, you know, I can do uh, two of these in seven hours on each side of the machine. That's so cool. And, that, that, you know, and for that price, it's unmatched. Right, the ability, the ability to be able to have a consistent product produced from this, mm -hmm. you've all of a sudden, you, you're essentially doubled the throughput. That. Absolutely, and it's not double the price, so when I run the numbers, like you know, a procurement would for a manufacturing company, you, you buy that one. That's and that will run any material, so we don't charge you extra for, you know, like, we don't charge you extra so you can print PEC. That, that machine will print everything we have. Everything right out of the box. Right out of the box. Anything you throw at it. Hey, it's Joel. We're at Rapid. I'm at the Aon 3D booth, and this is Leaf right here. Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, this is a new machine from what we've seen last time, right? Correct. This Let's the, talk about this. Sure. So this is the Aon M2 Plus, and this is our fifth generation of the M series architecture from Aon 3D now. You know, a couple interesting new features that come with you know, five generations of stability and reliability testing. Uh, biggest one of note on this one is the vacuum build plate. Vacuum, so the, yeah. the build plate is under an active vacuum while printing. Exactly, so this lets you swap uh, surfaces really easy, which is great for production printing. You've got a lot of surface options, so depending what kind of material you print, you can pick the optimal surface to print on. Okay. And then uh, typically we, we're using our new carbon fiber peak reusable plate, so oh. no waste. Uh, Great, you know, uh, attachment when you're printing like those first couple layers, and then easy part removal. They slide right off at the end of it. So that's really cool. Th Plus, with the vacuum great. too, I I've printed materials before with a magnetic attached flex plate, and I've had to lift away from the magnets just because of the the material uh, cooling and it shrinking back. Right. So then I would imagine the vacuum aids in that as well. Right. Exactly. You know, it's. Um, it's able to provide enough force, and when you're getting to like 200 Celsius bed temperatures for some of these high temperature polymers, <laughs> adhesives and stuff are just not going to cut it. And your magnets are going to fail at that temperature Exactly, anyway, magnets right? are going to weaken, and uh, this works well. So then this machine, uh, I have to ask what it costs. Yeah. Uh, so it's fifty thousand U.S. dollars. It's still low price for the base in, in the realm, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty much the um, largest build volume to price ratio in the industry right now. And yeah, that's 18 by 18 by 23 inches currently of build volume Jeez. for fifty thousand dollars, and you still get access to Peak, Altum, PEC, all those great thermoplastics. So then, I'd like to ask you: Do you feel that we're at that point where we're starting to democratize the high temp materials for people to print? Because like with resin, for example, it used to be high end, expensive machines, right. and now you can now you can get machines for a hundred dollars or less and print high quality resin figures. Right. And so are we on that trajectory for PEC and Peak and Ultim? I think we are on that trajectory. That and that was our goal from the beginning was, you know, materials equals applications. Get more materials into the hands of more engineers and more tinkers and see what they come up with. That's cool. And you know, it's one thing to get out of the nozzle. It's another to have a nice, solid, strong part. So it's really it's all the thermals throughout the system. It's the convective flow paths, it's the chamber heat, all of that coming together. Um, to give you nice strong parts in performance polymers. And like you've said, it's all about um, these, these materials then, and we can actually talk about something else that's cool is these materials are allowing cheaper 
faster travel to the moon, right? Right, so actually we are, we are scheduled right now to have the uh, first 3D printed parts to land the on first. the moon. The first! The first, early next year. That's together with uh, Astro Robotic, one of our customers. And uh, they're performance polymers like PEC and carbon fiber PEC with desirable, you know, low outgassing properties, high strength, lightweight. So re replacing components that would potentially otherwise be metal, but still providing that performance needed for you know, space travel. And so the material itself can withstand the stresses needed that was typically metal, aluminums, and now it's CFPEC. Right, so stresses, thermals, outgassing performance, all that kind of stuff. That's really cool. And you, when is that scheduled for? Uh, early next year. Early, early next year, I can't, I, I will see that on the news. I Absolutely. hope so. So lastly, I do want to talk about something, Leaf, because I'm standing in front of it, this is a stool, am I right? Yeah, that's uh, you know like a jar of design based uh, <laughs> stool. Uh, we've been sitting on it all week, setting up here, and uh, yeah, <laughs> neat fun little project just to show off the build volume of the printer. This is well, and what material is this? Is this PETG? Uh, this is 100% infill solid ABS. ABS. This is ABS. That's yeah. even better. Uh, yeah. The print quality is great, and it, uh, like you said, it's a wonderful thing to show off not just the build volume, but the ability to handle materials that could warp or otherwise disfigure themselves right. in the print process. ABS is our baseline. Uh, like we, you know, it's the same price per kilo as PLA. Uh, you might as well just always use ABS. Or cheaper sometimes, right? Or cheaper sometimes. So it's it's basically our baseline for nice, easy to work with, this strong is cool. material. Well, the baseline for me is whether it could withstand the full Joel. So can I sit on it? Yeah, go for it. All right, here we go. I have to I have to mount it like Riker in Star Trek. Oh, that's solid. That's yeah. legit solid right there. I feel good. How much fun was that? So much great information about these industrial products. I can't wait to bring you more. Again, episode one of three from Rapid TCT 2021. Thanks to SME. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Don't forget to hug each other more. And as always, high five.